set of parts that converts this printer to an E3D V6 head. And I wasn't satisfied with the quality of the part that was printed before. I'm going to remove the side of the printer here. I'm going to make an upgrade, a repair. These teeth right here are what hold the side of the printer on. And you can take a uh, maybe the end of a steel ruler or some kind of uh, some kind of spatula-like device, cutting knife, and open these up. You don't want to use metal things with sharp edges and pry on this. Uh, imagine this is polycarbonate because you'll you can start a crack in it. So once you get those undone, you can just lay the lid over. Just as easy as that. The flaw I want to repair in this is this movement here. And there's two sources of this. I'm going to show you the big one. Here's the movement as viewed from the side. Look at this bearing right here. We can see that this molding around the bearing is very loose. This problem has been identified by many people and I've never seen what I thought was a satisfactory repair. Um, some people will just take a, a knife blade or corner of a razor blade or exacto knife and wedge it in there to tighten it up. I would anticipate that the problem is the whole cavity is too large with too much clearance around that and what we really need to do is make the bearing larger in diameter so that when we uh, take up this slack we don't push the rack completely one direction or the other. We tighten it up by maintaining the center and we'll do that by enlarging this bearing. This is a fairly easy repair. I've not practiced it in advance. I'm just going to uh, film it as I do it. These are T10 Torxes. What I'm going to do is remove the supports for these shafts so that we can take the shaft out of there. Get these screws out. I need to raise the bed up. Perhaps I should have done that electronically before I started this project. Some would call it lazy. I call it effective. Use the printer itself to move that table up. You know, I think I'll stop it about halfway up. Just want to make room for my tool. And as a little clue to keep you from losing things, get yourself a neo magnet. And you can put screws on it so they don't get lost. Here we go, there's the other one. Okay, we got that one loose. These two screws will let us get rid of the clean out tray here that's kind of in our way. Here are the two screws that support the top of the rod. Get those out of the way. Look at that. Now the bearings on the other side are completely captured in this plastic and I think that this is an open side just for ease of assembly. So it looks like our bearings are 12 millimeter. This pocket that they're in must be some amount larger than that. Ah, there we're seeing 12.2 essentially. So I'm going to show you a simple way to increase the diameter of the bearing. Let's measure the thickness of electrical tape. Ah, it's just about the amount of our gap. So if I put one non-overlapping wrap around the bearing of electrical tape, then we will have a slight press fit. Now this might be too tight, 
in which case I'll find another tape. This is a very simple way of making a spacer and not losing center on a shaft. I've got this block of aluminum here so I can cut it nicely. Oh, I had it's a little wide yet. Let me narrow it some. There we go. Now I'm not pulling this. If you pull it, it, it can come loose later. And we can see where it ends. So I'm going to overlap my end and press it in. And it looks like it's about right there. Wow. This is not going to work because this is an oil light bearing, which means it's got oil in micro cavities and pores in the bearings. So what I'm going to do is use some brake clean to try to clean the oil off of this and see if I can get the tape to stick. We could, of course, turn new bearings on the lathe. trying to come up with something here that people can easily do at home who don't have a lathe. Brake clean is a beautiful substance. I wonder if that's stuck. Let's squeeze it in there and give it a try. Here we go. I have the seam towards me. And yes, it's pushing the pushing a loop up on the tape. Seems to be in there relatively snug. I think I can use it this way for a while and see if it uh, see if it stays in place. Not uh, totally happy with this solution, but we'll give it a go. So here's my interesting solution. Got the tape short. And I'm making a connection across that surface with zap goo. And this will glue the tape to the bearing. This stuff will glue anything to anything. And I will position this glue so it's not interfering in the bore so I don't glue the bearing in or cause any uh, undue stress in the cavity. So this will be facing out. You could of course glue these bearings in, but then you wouldn't be holding center and what I'm trying to do is hold center by using the tape as a shim. So we'll let that cure, we'll put them on the rod and reinstall it and see how it works. Our zap goo has had plenty of time to dry should keep the tape from becoming dislodged and falling off. We'll install these on the rod. Let's go put them in the printer. And get these in position with my glue spot out. See, ah, I've got the top one in position first. 
has little dowel pins in the in the end cap that holds the end of the rod that have to go into holes in the holes in the, uh, in the sheet metal. There we go. Get our fasteners installed. Remember with plastic fasteners, fasteners going into plastic, you always turn them backwards until they drop down. Because these are self-threading. We've all when they were first installed, they cut their first thread. We don't want to cut more threads, that's how you strip out plastic parts. Top screws installed. These two remaining screws hold the uh, hold this tray. Okay, we got rid of the clickety clickety movement. We no longer have any slop here. I can flex the rods a little bit because we've got this in the middle of the throw. But we don't have any more play from these bearings. Now there's one more source of play, and that is the shafts here where you adjust the um, level of the bed. There's nothing to, I mean there's, there's spring loaded and it tends to hold in place, but this is another area that could be improved. And I think we'll save those improvements for another video. And meanwhile, we'll put the printer back together and re-level the bed and try it out with our, uh, all of our slop taken out of these two bearings. Our tray installed. Beautiful. Get my magnet out of here. I was using to retain screws. Now we're ready to try it out. Got the bed all leveled. She's warming up and ready to do a getting ready to do a sample print for us. Here we go. Printing our first object since I tightened up the bed and we leveled it. What I'm printing is uh, a part with a thin cross section that builds vertically on the board. And it's part of the set of parts that converts this printer to an E3D V6 head. And I wasn't satisfied with the quality of the part that was printed before. And a tall, thin part really shows the error of the, uh, the bed moving around. So I'm uh, looking forward to seeing a much nicer part. We'll come back when it's done. Our part is complete. Here's a prior part I printed. Two of them. This one at 90% extrusion. This one at, I'm sorry, this one at 95% extrusion. This one at 90% extrusion. And this one here was printed at 90%. Um, when I go to 100 percent extrusion I'm getting a little too much plastic and it builds up a puddle on top so I've got something else out of calibration now this is a good looking part very straight corner here a little bit improved over these two especially down here at the bottom um, these are supports that you see here that get torn away um, I believe I've got a little better looking part except for I've got a layer separation there which might be because I've got my extrusion multiplier set at 90 and not 95. This is a difficult part to print. I don't like these overhangs. I think this could have a little more fill. It's an acceptable, usable part, but uh, I think I'll print another one just to see how it comes out. I don't like these overhangs. For some reason, this one here, even though I didn't change the uh, fill pattern in the thing, uh, printed more supports. I'm sorry, I didn't change the support pattern, but it printed more supports. So it's that's something that's a little bit unexplained to me as to why it prints a different support structure 
sometimes with each print. Got a little bit of a ra radius here. It's a little bit of a jog in the part. But that jog seems a little better than this part. I don't know, they're very similar. I didn't get a huge improvement out of that modification. But this is only one part and it'll have uh, an impact over time on improving my quality. This is a lot more solid now. I can feel just a tiny little bit of play in it. It's probably in the bearings on the other side. Or just in the clearance between the shaft and the bearing. So there we go. Another completed project. A refinement of the XYZ Printing Da Vinci 1.0A. Subscribe, like, share. If you like content like this, it'll encourage me to do more. And yet another example. Printed at 95% rate on the filament. I think it looks better. Fewer gaps between strands. Tough part to print. Looking pretty good though. I think I'll weed, uh, weed this one out and actually use it. When I get around to installing my E3D V6 head. Or hot end I guess it would be. So that's it for this round of modifications. From the Crafted Channel, 3D printing, home shop skills, bushcraft, and knife making when we get around to it. It's time to get your hands dirty, get something done, do something in the workshop. You can do it. Would you put it up here for me? Without touching me? <laughs> What? Feed me, but don't touch me. <laughs> well, that don't convince you. I don't know what will. Put Bam Bam up there with him. <laughs> Got the eyes trained on that can. I wonder what's going on in that little brain. <laughs> Not much. I was sure that can of cat food would be like a magic. Mm -hmm. I thought so too. So who's dumb? Us or the cats? I think that it's us. You think that it's us? <laughs> I don't want them eating out of those because they have a sharp edge. Yeah, I guess we're just going to have to give up and leave. You ready? Not if you're gonna talk to me. You got more there's there's hungries here. You got hungries. Yeah. Certainly you would want a hungries.
the hell are you looking at? <laughs> Come on, baby. It's only a matter of time before we got two cats in her stock. Yeah. Yeah. People licking chops. Nom, nom, mm. that's good stuff. Yeah, you got to be hungry. Yeah, Bammy's got hungries. Bammy will eat the food. Yeah, Bammy says, I will eat the foods. So I got no worries eating the foods. <laughs> yes, I know. Okay. You're on your own key. Yeah. Okay? You come down when you want. The loneliness was making her meow, but now that we're here... Yeah, she's like, oh. <laughs>